When I arrived, I happened to see a child holding it. He said the flowers were prepared by Aunt Jessie for the watchmaker and the war comrade he'd missed his whole life. Mikhail would place two bunches of flowers here year after year. And after he left, it became three. Your wishes will always be remembered by someone. Now, Panacone, as you hoped, has welcomed the dawn after a long, dark night. The path forward may not be a bed of roses, but at least people are prepared to step forth towards freedom. Tiernan, you can go home now. While the Nameless are also preparing for the next stop of their voyage. But before leaving, we still have one last thing to do. A fitting end to the tale of the departed. One could not ask for a better farewell. Go on. They're all here. Honestly, when I heard the Conductor's request, I was pretty surprised. The Nameless. Those who trailblaze, doing good deeds but never seeking recognition. After all this time, how would we even find those three people in such a vast place like Penacony? But it seems, in the land of the dreams, anything is indeed possible. History may not remember the names of the dead, but the stars will attest to their journeys. The first glimmer of light in the prolonged night often illuminates little, as it is fleeting and the darkness too vast. But because of this, people will remember. As long as something shines in the night sky, then when the first star falls, countless more will follow, streaking across the horizon. Brooklyn Tiernan, Rosalina J. and Estella, we raise a toast to you, trailblazers of the Silver Rail. A toast to history that no longer remains silent. The passionate and courageous pursuit and a voyage that traverses the stars. That statue... It wasn't here last time. Looks like this is the last riddle that Mr. Gallagher left for us. In the end, we still failed to figure out his true identity, or if he was even a living person. Uh, what should I say? I mean, this guy is definitely a history fictionologist, all right. I'm suddenly reminded of the time at the theme park when he said he was only 13 years old. Could that have meant something too? Either way, he's an enigmatic character for sure. At least our journey together in Panacone was real enough. And his loyalty and love for this land must have been real too, right? Gallagher, we raise a toast to you, the slumbering hound. To the festival's invitation, to all lies and the singular truth. If we ever meet again, please don't talk in riddles. Is the Astro Express ready to depart Penacone? Uh, apologies, Mr. Mika, that we are only now bidding you farewell. Oh, that's all right. You've all done so much for the Watchmaker, and we are forever indebted. Allow me, as the representative of Dreamflux Reef, to make another toast to all the nameless. What will the people of Dreamflux Reef do now? Many will continue to live here, 
Those accustomed to being awake will mostly have a hard time getting used to a life of darkness with their eyes closed. Though the order has faded, there must be someone to watch over this primal memory zone. <sighs> Penacone's nights are long, and there are many who are still far from a good night's sleep. As for the sweet dream over there... <laughs> we're still managing without it, aren't we? Mika and residents of Dreamflux Reef, we raise a toast to you, watchers of the long dream. To your tenacity throughout time, to each sorrowful night, and to the dawn that is finally upon us. <laughs> In the end, we still came full circle. This trailblazing expedition started from the moment you and a bellboy ran into each other. After going on a journey of many twists and turns, they still ended up where they started. Just like a clock's hands that turn round and round, the start and end of each day will always land on 12 o'clock, the advent of time moving forward. There shouldn't be much left to say. This entire adventure started because of you, and should naturally end with you. And then, a new page will be turned. Mikhail Char Legwork, we raise a toast to you, watchmaker of the land of the dreams, nameless of the Astral Express. To Penacone's past, present, future, and the child's unwavering dream unto death. With that, our duty as nameless should be complete, right? The trailblaze can illuminate the way, but... Ultimately, the future of a world belongs to those who live in it. Uh, I still feel that Mr. McHale must have really wanted to witness this day himself. What's on your mind, March? Just a strange feeling. I had it a few stops ago, but it's super strong this time. Why not talk about it? Maybe everyone's thinking the same thing. I can't help but think that whether it's Mr. McHale, Mr. Tiernan, or Madame Rosalina, their lives must have been long, and they must have experienced plenty of stories. They were also young once, stumbling and bumbling around just like us. Getting into scraps and mischief, that sort of stuff. Companions, enemies, journeys, adventures, all the sad and happy memories. The every day that we're used to, they've lived through them too. But those things are all in the past. I know, but the thing that I can't get out of my mind is the present. It'll be easier to understand if I use an analogy. Like, when you're reading a book, if one of its characters keeps running into obstacles and experiences an ending full of regrets, we're bound to feel a bit mixed about it, right? Because we've seen every nook and cranny of their lives, we see these people as special. So, even if there are parts of it that aren't really realistic, nor logical, we still hope that their story gets a good ending when it comes. But, what if they... and we... aren't really that special? When Mr. McHale sat in this chair, waiting for the Astral Express to arrive every day, what was he thinking? And if, at the end of his life, he could still firmly say he had no regrets... 
then, what is this regret we feel in our hearts right now? Hmm. I think each and every one of us is searching for the answer to this very question. The universe is vast, and our lives are but specks. The trailblaze never ends, but against the backdrop of the cosmos, the average person's lifelong journey is merely a short stretch. But it is in this minuscule distance that paths cross, and countless worlds connect. The universe may not remember every person who leaves a tie along the silver rail, but we will. As long as we remember, their stories will never end. And what Mr. McHale has left for us is his answer to this very question. It may not be perfect, but it left a smile on this storied, jaded old nameless's face at the end of his life. And its meaning will be interpreted by those who come after us. It's not the answer that's important, but what we can learn from others' answers, right? This is what trailblazing is. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm really sorry for bringing down the vibe. Quick, Don Hung, tell us a dad joke to lighten the mood. <laughs> it's never a bad thing to reflect. One day we'll all have to face our own farewells. But before that, we still have a long way ahead of us together. So the most important thing right now is to tell the conductor what we saw in Penacony. Then prepare ourselves for our next trailblazing destination. I should get back to the Express. Or maybe I could say my final goodbye to Acheron. Do you still remember when we first arrived in Penacony? Who would have thought our paths would cross in such a way? The ocean of stars is vast. And given our destinations, I'm afraid our paths may not cross again. But the trailblazing expedition ahead is always full of unknowns. And my blade is sharp enough to sever fate. As long as we maintain our original resolve, I believe there will come a day where we will meet again. <sighs> come to think of it, I didn't even get a chance to formally introduce myself. Simply put, I'm a self-annihilator who was cursed by the Nihility. My hometown was destroyed a long time ago, and the whole world was erased beneath their shadow. In order to fight against the cruel end of self-destruction, I went on a journey in search of a way to sever the chains of the Nihility. After a long and grueling search, I am convinced that my destination lies within the depths of the Dark Web, where reality and the Nihility are separate. In there lurks a secret called Device Nine. One day, I'll reach it. Ah. In that case, I must apologize for my rudeness. Do you remember when we first met? I once said you reminded me of an acquaintance. Because of the self-annihilator's curse, my memories are stripped away, blurring my past. And after our journey together, what I originally thought were familiar feelings were merely illusions. I believe this was truly our first meeting. What do you mean? It's improbable that you've crossed paths with my past self. What I mean is, there is nothing left to retrace there. Only nihility. I see. You've also had a similar experience? Then you should know that this me and your memory of me are not the same person. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Long ago, I too was like you, with irreplaceable companions. We also embarked on journeys, making the best choices we could, whenever we could. Unfortunately, we didn't achieve the outcome we wanted. But moments like this make me feel like they never even left. In this universe, there exist countless worlds that are similar yet different, and countless people who are alike yet distinct. I too have wandered alone, encountering acquaintances on strange worlds, seeing their silhouettes overlap with my past. In your opinion, what does this déjà vu mean? Attachment, desire, longing. They may all be right, but they are all incomplete. I believe it's not something external, but something that originates within us. An emotion that traverses time from a certain moment of our past to reach us. Perhaps it's a source of warmth and happiness. Or maybe it brings pain and sorrow. Each time we reminisce on our past, we always seem to notice a tiny but unforgettable instant that we left behind us, along with certain other things that remain constant throughout. That is a summary of our lives, encapsulating everything about us in these moments, proof of our shared path. Within them, we glimpse our own essence, and thus, we truly exist. Just like everyone in this story, hurtling onwards along the path of destiny with passion and courage for the things that breathe meaning into their lives. Set forth on your voyage without hesitation, Nameless, on the path of the Trailblaze. Even if the ending has been predetermined, that's fine. There are countless things that humans cannot change. But before that, on the road towards the end, there are still many things that we can do. And because of this, the end will thus reveal a completely different meaning. This is the meaning of journey. All those things, beautiful before, are still so now. And I believe it will still bloom at the end of the nihility until we meet again beneath the sun's rays. Your method of consolation is truly unsophisticated. Still better than just standing there like a scarecrow. Pom-Pom. We told Pom-Pom all about our adventure, and they suddenly started crying. I've never seen Pom-Pom so sad before. <laughs> the conductor never cries! Pom-Pom is never sad! Pom-Pom is just... just... just angry! Yeah, angry! No matter where the express stops, you lot always manage to cause chaos! My 
my well-thought-out timetable completely ignored. If you carry on like this, the express is gonna run out of fuel. That's right. Pop-Pop is just angry. It's not because of Misha, Tiernan, Rosalina, and the rest. It's okay. Oh, Pom-Pom, just let it all out. Everyone, could you all take a break in the next car? Don't worry. I'll stay here with Pom-Pom. But... Let's go, March. It's okay. Oh, Pom-Pom, just let it all out. I never expected Pom-Pom would be so distraught. Those three nameless must have meant a lot to Pom-Pom. No one knows exactly when Pom-Pom boarded the Express, but one can surmise that their journey has been filled with many hellos and goodbyes. Probably more than we can imagine. The fact that they're crying so hard is probably a good sign. It proves that Pom-Pom's emotions haven't become dulled by the grind of time. They still deeply cherish every nameless who has boarded the Express and value every journey shared with them. Leave it to Himako. When it comes to comforting, there's no one better on the Express. <laughs> well, they were a little emotional at the time, but I'm afraid that's not out of the question. Since you joined us, the Express has stayed longer than anticipated at every stop along the way. And to ensure that everyone always makes it back on board, Pom-Pom has had no choice but to delay the warp jump schedule. I see. <laughs> no wonder I can regularly hear Pom-Pom pacing anxiously up and down the corridor. Turns out Pom-Pom's been silently putting in a lot of work for us. Wow. Different from typical vehicles, the Astral Express converts every trailblaze into the energy it needs to run. Ideally, as long as trailblazing expeditions continue without interruption, the Express will receive a constant flow of energy, much like a perpetual motion machine. But, because of our previous encounters, Fuel is being used up much faster than expected. We can probably only pull off two more warp jumps at most. Only two more? Isn't that super risky? Oh, I don't want to become an ice cube floating around in space again! When you put it like that, it doesn't actually sound too bad. But I don't even want to become an adorable ice cube floating around in space again! Which also means that we must prudently consider our next destination. Yes, uh, I've already checked the astral charts. The two nearest worlds to us are the oceanic planet of Lushaka and the agate world Melustanen. As for which one we're headed to, that still requires a vote. Or perhaps you might consider a suggestion. Everyone, we meet again. Uh, it's you! Why were you just in my room? Hmm. It's a very cute room, Miss March. Just like you. Memo Keeper, let's put aside how you managed to sneak past everyone and board the Express for now. You mentioned a suggestion. I accidentally overheard how the Express obtains fuel. I just wanted to chat with everyone to see if we could work together. But now, it appears my suggestion could be the very lifeline that saves everyone. 
Please speak candidly. Depending on what you say, we could very well ask you to disembark. Ah, the Permanence's descendant. What a charming little dragon. Especially with those mired memories of yours. But I digress. If the Astral Express is in urgent need of a special trailblazing expedition to recharge its engine, have you all considered this? Perhaps your destination could be a world that even the renowned Aki Vili never reached. Should you be able to lay down a new stretch of silver rail, the Express may never have to worry about energy ever again. Trailblazing to a world that even Aki Vili has never been to? Is that possible? Continue, Memo Keeper. This destination of which you speak, what sort of world is it? A world that many across the universe don't even know exists. A world hidden away from outside observation. Its presence only revealed by the light from the mirror of the Garden of Recollection. A world fettered by three paths, its destiny hanging in the balance. The Eternal Land, Amphorius. I hope I'm not too late, child. I wasn't expecting it to be you. Don't you know how many sentry posts the family has built? And how hard it is to get you out of here. <laughs> Looks like my time's up. What do you mean? What time? Negotiation, interrogation, or death. My fate lies entirely in your hands, Lady Bonajade. The dance is done. Why bother with the compassionate pretense? and give someone who's about to die the chance to talk. Despite your fall from grace, you still look well. I'm very glad to see that you're so full of verve. <sighs> Do not insult my pride with half-veiled sarcasm. Have you specially come to see me just to sate your vile vanity? Oh, of course not. I merely came to fulfill your younger sister's wishes. To offer you a generous trade. That is, if you're willing to accept. Robin? To build a true haven where everyone can attain peace. That's the oath between you siblings, isn't it? If I told you there was still a chance to realize this vow, would you be willing to talk to me then? <laughs> <laughs> I recognize the gravity of this question. Which is why you don't have to answer me right now. Go now. You are free, O oh Chosen One, who dare to exceed his bounds. Sever your wings, descend to the mortal realm, and walk their lands. See what this world is truly like. <sighs> I will not accept your charity. As I mentioned earlier, it's a trade, and you don't have to give me an answer right now. Rewards are not reaped in a day, and if there's one thing I'm best at, it's waiting. The sweet dream still continues, and the night is still long. You have plenty of time to contemplate your answer. Ah, a word of advice for you before we part ways. A word of warning from someone who's been in your shoes before. Life is too short to miss out on golden opportunities. <laughs>